shit. Reno, what up? Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. Being cold hearted is why the soul departed. So ruthless, something like farmers watch your soul the harvest. My word is my bond, I don't do no broken promise. We masks like cigarillos, black attached, just like a harness. Beg your pardon, I feel like I ain't gotta introduce. Make knuckles to the floor, really shit. Best you give salute, you live by clout. We die by honor, it's the principle. Clown round, the nine go clap at you with syllables. Speak the visual, I'm from the zoo, it gets difficult. Take you to the pinnacle and drop you. That's my gift to you. Turn your bitch ass into a cast, but now you invisible. Your team won't last it on neither, cause they imbeciles. Never bow what you spend, but bow what's recouped. You held accountable. I don't care about what the mothers do. Last thing you heard was, you see my colors shoot. Body flowing through the river, and they ain't discovered you, cuz. Cold blooded. Cold blooded. On this killer shit. We let the dummies do the talk of ventriloquist. We ride by barrel sticking out the van, sizzling the antithesis of docile. Live like a Rothschild. You and your man's middleman. I shoot from the top down, cripple them. All my beef special ops now. We champagne and caviar, beluga from Moscow. And still pay your base head to shoot up your mom's house. I suit up. Who wanna dance? Put on your prom gown. It's late night, eight life. Your babies get stomped out. My last Flip ATF raided the compound. Niggas said they was gangster, but they not now. I'm from Queens, where niggas got scars from shanks. Where the dope fiends lean on your cars like banks. Bulletproof windows, riding an armor tanks. Niggas is on demon time to give God the thanks. We cold blooded. Yeah. I call my shooters off the shooters barge into your crib and boom you hit Peace, peace, peace. What's going on? This is Toast Johnson and the Pinoy Podcast. Uh we got a new season starting up here and um we got a dope guest with us. This is Reno RX. Got the new album out, The Living God. It's crazy as nuts, it's on all streaming platforms spotify youtube wherever you can go listen to your music you know what i mean and i'm definitely honored to uh to have him as my guest today what up reno what's going on salute brother thanks fam and thanks for having me on the show man yeah man we done went through a whole bunch of uh they don't know out there in tv land but it, this is a rough thing trying to get this thing going finally you know what i mean so i'm definitely uh blessed that we can finally um we can finally chat for a little bit you know what i mean yes sir yeah, um, that joint we just came out of is nuts, B. You know what I mean? Uh, Cold Blooded with uh, it's Cold Blooded the remix, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dude. Yeah, with um, with Boo Boo the Prince. Salute the Boo Boo the Prince, B. We uh, we had him on the show and was uh, definitely a dope interview and um, definitely a good dude. Salute, salute. But um, yeah. So uh, how how did that happen? Because uh, when I look on the on the album, um, that Boo Boo is not on the original song. So how to how the remix came up? Oh man, um, the remix came about through Jay Rios. Um, he Salute, Luca Jay Rios. Sorry. Yeah, Jay Rios, my dog. Uh, he's you know he he's a key player for uh, New Crack Era. Uh, Boo Boo is signed uh, New Crack Era West, so you know I reached out. Um, I told Jay, yo, I think this nigga's dope. And Jay was like, what? Linked it. Two minutes later, you know what I mean? We was, we was talking on the text. And the remix came about, man. Boo Boo is dope. Oh, without question. Without question. I mean, um, the whole album is dope. I'm going to be saying that because it's true. You know what I mean? I, it's fresh in my ears. Been listening to it. You know what I mean? Catching up for this interview. And uh, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's... Uh, it's definitely like you know it hits you know it hits you it hits you on some real shit. it's, it's nice dramatic nice dramatic beats nice clear hard as a fuck lyrics you know what i mean and um definitely man you're gonna hear me say that a couple of times but yeah what uh on a on on a joint what's um what's some of your favorites if you if you you know if you remember some um so joints like uh futurama 
Oh, oh yeah, that's another one of mine. I had that on my list. Futurama's hard as fuck, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm particularly proud of that bounce that I use. Um, of course, Digger, who's a producer from France, he he produced the whole album. He's incredible. Um, we never actually met in real life, but uh, we've been working together for the past six, seven months to create this. Uh, he's very patient, put up with me. I'm very picky uh, because I'm not used to relinquishing that control creative, creatively wise. Um, but he, he was patient. Oh, because that's because you're that's because you're a producer yourself, right? Right, right, right. So I can understand that. I can understand that. Yeah, go. Yeah. I'm a one stop shop, but um, I we link through my man Bayer, who's down with OBH. Uh, he is, in my opinion, the dopest MC out of Delaware, hands down. Um, that's you know, no disrespect to any other rappers from Delaware, but if you're nice, say something, I don't know you, right? I mean, um, but yeah, he linked us. Bay, um, Digger is, is you know, he, he lives in France now, and basically. Their, their type of hip hop, they're on some 90s shit over there. Like, they're a little behind us. But that also puts them in the golden era. Right, you know right. So, we matched perfectly because I'm from that era. So, definitely, definitely. Uh, salute to Digger. And, and definitely salute to, you know, uh, the whole branch hip hop movement who's keeping um that particular type of hip hop alive. You know what I mean? Keep doing it keep going hard you know what i mean that's what we need and we definitely need um need y'all to come over here and we need to go over there and keep this thing building worldwide so definitely salute the digger and uh all those out there in france that's with that real hip-hop business you know what i mean um what getting getting back to the album uh the living god how you come up with that title so the living god was a continuation of the the, the my first album free based pharaoh and basically um the pharaohs back in the days got to a point where they got so powerful they were just considering themselves as living gods and making the people under them worship them so mm -hmm. the album is a natural progression the second album you know i went from the free based pharaoh to the living god you know now you know being a new fan of yours and listening to your catalog uh i heard that you did the, your next album is the coliseum yeah yeah i, li I like to I'm, I'm a history buff so i like to um i like to keep that theme and the coliseum um it basically has a double meaning everybody knows the the, the roman coliseum back in the days where the gladiators used to go to fight you know um only the best survived right and, um, you know, basically, I'm, I'm I'm ready to step in that ring with anybody lyrically. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a gladiator when it comes to these bars. Also, um, you know, I'm an alumni of Gladiator School, also commonly known as prison. You know, but but to top it off, um, and that's not dope. <laughs> but to top it off, there was also a mall where I'm from called the Coliseum. And it was it was like a key place in my upbringing, so it's like a, it's like a double meaning when I say the Coliseum. Niggas from Queens know it, it, that's that's a little a little shot for them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you know, the world knows the Coliseum, the Roman Coliseum. Right, 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 right. Now, um, how would you describe how would you describe your music? How would you describe your style? 90s grimy gangster rap bottom line no nothing for the ladies um you know it's definitely gonna make you think it's not it's not about glorifying um violence at all as a matter of fact i talk about a lot of the pitfalls that come with that life you know because um, I, I i want niggas to be scared i want them to say damn i don't, I don't want to end up like that i don't want to go to jail and hurt my family you know, leave them, you know, uh, have to rely on them for basic things. You know, you, I don't want to sling crack just to go inside and make 15 cents an hour or a day. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? That shit is, shit is scarier than it should be. So that's, um, 
when I say hardcore gangster rap, that's what I that's what I mean. Cause to me, gangster rap changed the world, like with NWA. But they, if anybody who's familiar with their lyrics, they wasn't really promoting gangster shit at all. Right. They was discussing it. Right. And got that title gangster rap, but they was not out here like, hey, being a gangster is the shit. Like it was some, they was talking about some ugly shit. Yeah, I mean, it's it was it's. It was like it's like an editorial, you know what I mean? Slang editorial <laughs> on some woo shit, on some it's like you know editorial. It's what it's what y'all do best, you know what I mean? As far as you know, writing that, writing that, uh, putting that pen to the pad and explaining your experiences and and if your experiences growing up, you coming from Queens, right? Yeah, yeah, flush yeah. Queens. That's what up. Shout out to Queens, you know what I mean? You from coming from Queens and and certain things that you uh. You probably experienced and what you saw comes out you know within your your writings you know what i mean and you don't want you don't want to sugarcoat that shit, so you want to be as real as you you can to let the 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 listener you know know and the smart listener of of these songs that that are gangster that are underground that are grimy that you know shit that knocks you on your head if you notice like yourself and just just within your camp, right? You, Booba the Prince, as we mentioned mentioned before, Jay Black, and of course, you know, Nice the Future, Ito. You know what I mean? All y'all have this in common that it's not just some braggadocious bullshit that you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's straight up telling you what's going on. It's poetry in a certain way that is educational. You know what I mean? It's, it's the, the education that from the street, you know what I mean? That niggas know the real shit that you need to survive. So, you know, like like I was saying before, is that, you know, your album, why I suggested that, you know, you know, people listen to it, is that uh if you need a little if you need a little toughening up and a little confidence when you, within yourself and knowing how shit is out here today. NWA was then. But what's going on right now is a new game. You know what I mean? And if you need to do that, then you need to listen to albums like The Living God. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 raw, it's raw and it's uncut. You know what I mean? And like I said, gangster rap is a certain title that might scare motherfuckers away. But at the same time, um the maybe the best songs in hip hop has came from that genre and taught you something. You know what I mean? No, nah, that that's real, and, and I tell you the truth. Um, you know, I try to emphasize a lot on uh, on on the on the pitfalls and, and the horrible side of it because you know I do want to discourage niggas from going through the dumb shit that I went through. But even if you go back when Brian De Palma did Scarface, like that shit did not end well for anybody involved. You know what I'm saying? Right. Niggas filtered out the ending, and they wanted to, you know. Man. Snort coke and shoot off AKs, but it's like, eh, there's some other things that happen too. Yeah, yeah, you know, you could be, you know, the shit is, I love that shit. I mean, the movie is crazy, you know, it, it, it probably influenced me in other ways. Then it influenced me to to the to, to, to go buy a key or, or to go pop a nigga in a dome, but, you know, other shit, it inspired me on, you know, don't get high on supply, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, you know, all the motherfucking rules, that's it. That's why I'm like, you know, I implore motherfuckers to watch The Godfather. And they mother like, that shit too long, man. And I'm like, nigga, that shit is a Bible. Fuck all of the, the shooting and all the gangster shit that you, you see in it. I love all that. But the jewels that the motherfuckers teach you in that is nuts. And those are the same jewels that I apply to the music that you make. You know what I mean? And others in that genre. It's the same fucking thing. Not saying, but the thing is with the Godfather and all them, it's a movie and all that, but they was dropping actual fucking philosophy about how to control or deal with your enemy. Never let your enemy know that he's your enemy. What the fuck? What? You know what I mean? Where the fuck that come from? And that is useful in real life. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, catch a nigga sleeping type shit. So, you know, definitely. But, um... Yeah, that's that's dope, man. I mean, uh, it, 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 you definitely have a, a a strong voice and a strong platform, uh, and I hope people take it the right way. You know what I mean? 
definitely. Um, I wanted to go through the album, man. Um, some of the um, we were talking about some of the songs on on there, and whatever it was like Futurama. Uh, what's another one that you remember that uh that we talked about? It was a, it was a few that I know. Oh yeah, no rich, no reward. You want to talk about that one a little bit? Yeah, that joint. Um, that joint started out with a whole different beat, and it was like me and, and Digger, the producer, we was having like a grimy contest. You know what I'm saying? Because right, was right, 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 right. I spit some grimy shit over it. He sent it back with an even grimier beat. I, you know, I was like, Digger, I could do this all day, dog. I'm from Queens, man. You're not going to outgrind me on my shit. You know what I mean? But he, he was very patient, very resourceful, very talented. And, and we figured out of it. It took us like six or seven months to do that album. And typically, I, I'll finish an album start to, we start to end in less than a month. You know what I'm saying? Because right. th- this is what I do. I work out. I, I do music. And I hang with my family. Same three things every day, all day, nonstop. So mm-hmm. it's nothing for me to finish an album quick. But with him, I gave him a hard time, man, because uh, like I said, I wasn't used to relinquishing that, that creative control. But in the end, it was a blessing because um, we came out with something that I wouldn't have done on my own. And it, and it was dope. The end right. Product. Right, so it's like you know, you 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 took something from it, you learned something from it, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. That and that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Yeah, but that's um that's definitely another banger. Was you surprised by by Digger's production, knowing that he came from France like that? That it was like, yo, this this sound like a dude from from the block made this or something. I mean, by the time we got to my album, to, to, to working on, excuse me, our album, um, mm-hmm. I was already familiar with the project he did with my brother Bea, uh from OBH. Um, so I I was amazed when I first heard what he was doing with Bayer. I was like, this nigga from France, though? You sure? Like, you know, um, because he's just doing some pure hip hop shit. And that's right. that shit. So by the time you got around to me, I, I was ready because I, I don't even really work with other producers like that. Not because I don't want to, but because um, it, it's not easy for other producers to deal with me because I am a producer and it's not easy for me to deal with producers because, um, you know, to me, there should only be one cook in the kitchen because I'm just so used to doing it. But, um, you know, when you when you um, refuse to evolve, that's when you fail. So I Boy, welcome I welcome it all. That's right. That that that's deep. That's deep. Definitely. Yo, um, I want to ask you about something. B. I want to ask you about how you feel about a uh, a new thing that's happening. Um, like drumless beats or drumless samples. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people are doing them. You know what I mean? I think it's a special special way that you know that that it needs to be done to really to really hit you got a few on uh on the album on living god uh where digger you know uh did that and it was dope you know what i mean it's like people like yourself and a couple others out there that do it know how to do it well but what's your what's your thoughts on uh on drumless beats or drumless samples oh man i love it when done correctly i think it's amazing um you know uh one of the first rappers or rap groups i should say i remember doing it was um ghost and ray you know right right just like all that i all that i need or i think that's the name all that i got is yeah 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 Fire, you know what i'm saying the other joint kick in the door the spot 360. Maybe if they had drums on that joint, it was super light. But I just remember that. that was, I think it was the Al Green sample. Right. Crazy. Right. Also, shit. Al Green, Simply Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Um, that song, he had drums in it in the last. Right. Maybe, like, the 30 <laughs> seconds of the song only. You know what I'm saying? And that's right. incredible. I don't think it's anything new. But I think when done correctly, it's fire, especially for an MC like me who uses a lot of words because, um, you know, sometimes you compete with the beat when you're an artist like that, use a lot of words like 
me, MCs like Nas, you know, niggas mm-hmm. should be trying to cram a lot of shit in there. And without the drums, that's a that's one less frequency that you have to compete with. So people are able to receive what you're saying better because there ain't no point in, in doing all that rapping if niggas can't hear it. Right, 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 right. No doubt. And that's that's one thing that I picked up on it when um that I happen to like about it is uh the concentration that goes directly to the lyrics, you know what I mean? Right. As far as like, you know, the clarity the clarity and you you can't do some to people out there, you know, listening. This is my opinion. You can't do drumless samples and don't have shit to say. Because it's gonna show. It's gonna show. You know what I mean? So those that 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 do it usually have powerful things that they're talking about, such as Reno RX, you know what I mean? So like, you know, that's the thing. It's it, it almost become like a spoken word type thing, like when a when an artist is on the stage and um, you know, and they're doing their spoken word. The crowd is is directly directly linked into what they saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Directly linked in, and that's the same thing that I see as far as when 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 brothers do uh, do those 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 type of songs. You know, without without the drums, that you know you really got to be saying something to 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 bring it out to hold the attention of uh, of your listener. So definitely, I mean that I see a lot of people doing it, and I think um, you know keep doing it but just do it creatively and you know and have something to say you know what i mean okay. definitely uh want to ask um you was mentioning uh you know earlier about uh incarceration and you know the uh, brothers go through what they go through and bless you know all the brothers that's 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 you know going through it and and trying to get through it you know what i mean to to the other side but um how you know with you being an artist as far as a, a a lyricist and doing what you're doing how was that experience how did that that influence your music in any kind of way and also you know <clears throat> in your personal life did it have any kind of reflection of of things that you had to do to 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 reset as far as like when you came home um yeah i had to not be a sucker anymore because jail is for suckers prison is for suckers you know what i'm saying like you're not tough going to prison you know um a lot of niggas you know i know you asked me how it affected me and my perception but the thing i like to focus on is the fact that it doesn't just affect that person who goes to jail matter of fact the nigga who go to jail got it the easiest three hot three cots in a hot but three hots in a cot nigga you you ain't got no bills to worry about you ain't got nothing right. to worry about you and they watching soap operas and, and hitting the yard and coming home with a glow and shit. right know, it's, it's, it's how it affects your people your your wife your kids your mother your father you know what i'm saying like because when one nigga go to prison the whole support system go to prison really and you know it's like how would you feel if a nigga came in your crib and violated your family you'd be horrible you feel horrible you want to kill somebody so why would you do it right you know and um i focus on on that on how it affects those around me because prison it's not like back in the days like when my uncle and them went to prison in the early 80s late 70s you know what i'm saying that was real fucking treacherous times you know what i'm saying you could bang a nigga and just go to the hole now right. they're giving them new charges and niggas trying to go home niggas try- man 90 percent of these niggas get locked up as programming like a motherfucker man you know what i'm saying the, the, the violence and all the rape and shit you have to immerse yourself in those things to to have it happen to you niggas ain't just stabbing niggas and raping i mean sometimes but it's very rare it's about the same chances as it is out in the world right you know, so my my what i learned from prison is that um i want to be able to educate people to not make the same mistakes that i have because it's not a one-time thing usually you know once you go to prison you have a record it affects how everything happens afterwards it makes it harder and harder everybody ain't gonna come out and be a wallow <laughs> try right. like, shit get hard right right 
in this day um that's why it's important as i'm like you know thinking about it now that's why it's important for you what you doing <clears throat> and the music that you making and the perspective that you have you know what i mean because you know needless to say you've been through it and you know you know like a motherfucker what it is you know what i mean and what's real and can guide those who are not as civilized as you are right now to at least you know get some hope to be on that path you know what i mean and they 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 they, they may not be a uh uh as well as writer as you but they may have other talents and other things that they can do to concentrate on that may you know can take up their time and hopefully build something you know what i mean so that's 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 real that is real like you said the effect on family people don't really understand that and see that you know when it's when it's kids and and loved ones as far as you know wives and and and, and mothers and grandmothers involved that uh yeah that shit is real it gets real you know what i mean i can only imagine you know what i mean so definitely i'm like you know your strength your strength is to be commended brother you know what i mean you know because it's like you don't have too many real soldiers and real generals out there that been through it and willing to uh you know i know it sounds cliche willing to make a change for the better you know what i mean but you know what i mean you know what i mean so yeah definitely but wanted to get right back um to uh to this album what um with the living guard um like what do you hope that people get out of it um well, one is that that witty lyricism is still alive, because the way I um, the way I, and that's not to take a shot at, at the music niggas is doing nowadays. I get it. It's it's by the youth for the youth, and and that's always been hip hop's thing. You know, they came right. to the youth, the people without a voice who want to be heard. So I don't knock no type of music. I mean, I don't think you should detail your crimes, whether it be on a rap album or in a fucking written statement in an interrogation room, I think we should just shut the fuck up about that. But I get the frustration and the youth wanting to be heard and shit. I want people to get out of my shit. Bars are still alive. Like a lot of people, I, I heard some people say, you know, um, some people say I'm a dope lyricist. Some people say my shit is, what they like about my shit is that it's just, it's like some effortlessly grimy shit but really i sneak my own shit in there I'm, I'm a geek you know what i'm saying i think learning is cool i'm with that shit. like if you go back to my first album um free bass pharaoh i got a song on there about um quantum physics you know what i'm saying um forget what the fuck is called but um yeah you know, it's like yes watch the god manifest something out of nothing then expand the stress that's about the birth of the universe you know what i'm saying big bang theory shit and i sneak that in there in a way to where it satisfies me i know where it's coming from and somebody else who's a geek might pick up on it and and go oh shit like there's a lesson in there like you know like scientists say they found string theory in the kabbalah or, mm -hmm. or whatever but it's like I want for every time you rewind my shit, you find something different. Right. If you're knowledgeable enough or care enough to want to learn, because it's not just, yo, I shot a nigga and it was cool, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, on the surface, maybe it sound like that, mm -hmm. but there's always something to find. The wine you find is always more to find. Mm -hmm. and that's what I want to give people. I want, I don't want you to hear it once. I don't want it to be fleeting. I want you to be able to go back and reference it and be entertained in a different way every time. That's the shit I'm on. That's what I'm saying, and that's so dope. Like you said, you know, I'm I'm gonna make a confession. I'm a geek as well. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, you know, but the thing is, is like, you know, not to like that's the thing. People may get it fucked up thinking that, you know, since we self-proclaimed geeks or anything, no, it has nothing to do with being weak you know what i mean i i am a full man that i am you know what i mean and nothing changes that but i know that um i'm definitely attracted to things that that makes me wiser you know what i mean things that that you know uh makes me more intelligent you know what i mean and 
and there's nothing weak about intelligence you know what i mean so i mean the thing is is that there's a big de-evolution that i call it that's going on in the world right now and and the righteous ones is protected from that you know what i mean such as yourself and me and there's too much de-evolution that's why you got a sexy ray that's why you got uh so much other shit where where the music you just going like come on now you know what i mean like for real i'm not sound trying to sound like an old grumpy ass nigga like yes yeah, you know you wouldn't understand it toast is it's, you know just the younger so you're going to tell me the younger generation has fell so fucking far that we got to talk about a, a chick butthole in a in, in the color of coochie or a color of butthole and that's a fucking hit you know what i mean that's why i don't mean to get too much on a on a on a soapbox but that's why I said, you know, I'll say fuck uh, uh, Gail and Oprah because they got on fucking Snoop for calling some chick a bitch. But I ain't hear them not once come out and say anything about Sexy Red and all that. Right? But they would probably say something about your lyrics where you saying some real shit. They would probably have a fucking problem with that. You know what I mean? I wanted to get y'all. So uh, how, how you link um, with with the the legendary Etho in them. Oh, that's all through my brother Nice the Future. Um, you know, I, I shit, man. With me, see that got to do with like like I said before. Um, I, I'm I just turned forty three. You know, right. I come off the bench fourth quarter type of shit. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, Nice always been trying to get me into the music game. Mm -hmm. I had my first kid when I was like twenty twenty one. So. Like, I, I couldn't be with the starving artist shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, starving. right. He was running around with Mob Deep going around the world. But um, I had to get that paper. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And um, a lot of people think it has to be one way. Like, you know, if you're not young in this rap game, then you ain't going to make it. But the truth is, there's great value in experience in life. <laughs> Excuse me, learning things and being situated before you jump in the arena too niggas right. gotta have something to rap about first of all nigga if so what you shot a nigga when you was 14 how many albums you gonna get out of that you know what i'm saying but me i done been around i did some shit. i seen some shit. i learned some shit. you know what i'm saying i got shit to rap about to forever not saying <laughs> i'm gonna be rapping forever right but, you know, get out there and experience the world it's like it's like how some niggas decide not to go straight to college from high school. Mm -hmm. you know, the book shit is, shit is cool on paper, but and that experience is a motherfucker. So Nice was always trying to get me to get back. Uh, that was long winded, but Nice was always trying to get me to get into music. And, um, you know, he kept pushing it. And finally, you know, uh, Mob Deep, who's. You know, them niggas is like gods to it. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Um, he said, yo, P, P had just came home. He was like, yo, come to this book signing. So um, there's a whole story that go with that. But I didn't say that on other platforms before. I don't want to I don't want to promote that too hard. But I was gotcha. reluctant at first. And then I went to the book signing. And P, who, who first of all was every bit of the nigga he was on the records you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. he was that dude god bless word welcome me with open arms i mean from the book signing to to the next day we up at nbc he's doing an interview about his book um the welcome home prodigy show i, I went from you know doing some you know i guess some could say illegal activity on say monday to wednesday i'm in the dressing room with little kim and black thought and and having drinks with capadonna you know what i'm saying and this was all thanks to my brother nice who who wanted better for me and um so we, we always been tight and then you know I, I i faded away did my own thing again but um about two years ago he hit me he was in the studio with Edo, and he was like, yo, you need to come on, man. It's, it's time for real. Like, you got to you gotta do your shit. Because I always rap. I had a deal when I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, the Azar brothers signed me, Herbie and uh, Steve. Definitely. Yeah, they found Kid and Play, Salt and Pepper. Yeah. All that, you know, um, 
they had the restaurant, I think it was bombed by a guy over there on the story of Boulevard in Queens. And um, they fuck with me. So I, I signed a single deal to Universal when I was 16. But then, you know, I went off to do my own thing. I took that that little bit of side of money and did the wrong <laughs> thing. Right, right. Yeah, but this time with Nice Call Me, you know, I'm good to go. I'm situated. Nice, big house out in the woods, family running around. You know, nice old seven series in the driveway. So I said, mm-hmm. sure, did I come down? And um, it was on from there. So, as soon as I got out there, the whole Rochester uh, just showed me love. Jay Black, Edo, Mark, um, Jay Rios, fucking all yeah. these guys. It was just love. And um, they're very talented brothers. And they respected my talent. And we just, I think that first month from money, there's something like, I don't know, dozens and dozens of songs. And um, it's been on since then, you know. Eventually, I came back. And I just started putting albums out nonstop. I mean, these niggas tired of me putting albums out. I'll just get warmed up. I told them, <laughs> nigga, we going. Yeah, that's what's up. That's that's definitely what's up. Salute to definitely, like I said, uh, Jay Rios and the whole front uh, Regal family. You know what I mean? That's out there. Yeah. You know, he throwing everybody. You know what I mean? Salute. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep making that music. Definitely the new Crack Ever West. Keep that going. You know what I mean? Because it's a, it's a special collective of y'all brothers, man. And what y'all doing is needed. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's much, definitely greatly needed. You know what I mean? Um. So, uh, the Coliseum is the next album now. Yeah, that's coming out December 19th, which is maybe a month away. That, and, and the speed. I mean, so it doesn't take you long to, to, to write. Oh, nah, nah, because this is really what I, like, I, I do three things, though. I, I do music, I exercise, I mean, I train heavy, I power lift, and I hang out with my family. Same thing every day. I love it. I live the best life. And see, this is a life you can live when you establish other things first, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I don't have to worry about, oh, how am I going to keep the lights on, blah, blah, blah. Nah, nigga, this is my job. Mm-hmm. That's deep. That's deep. And inspiring. You know what I mean? The certain brothers that, you know, listen up. You know what I mean? Um, yo, you know what I want this this is way off subject, but uh definitely want to get uh, your perspective for this. It's the it's the hot topic at this moment. So your thoughts on uh Andre B thousand new album, yo. It's a lot of people talking about it. Yeah, I, I it's fire. I ain't hear it. No, I didn't hear it either. I mean, the whole idea that, first of all, the nigga's such an accomplished lyricist. Without question. He don't even have to rap anymore. Yeah, he without question. And niggas, a lot of niggas, like, a lot of niggas think it's corny of him. But when you step back from, from a historical point of view, this is this is where I get on my nerd shit. We started hip-hop because they took the music classes out the hood. They wouldn't give us instruments. They wouldn't teach us how to play these things. So we got creative because that's the people we are. And we start cutting up break beats and rapping over those and blah, blah, blah. Niggas not even realize that on this 50th hip hop of anniversary, just 50 years, it's come back full circle to where one of our top lyricists from this thing that we created out of a desperate need is just using one of the instruments that they wouldn't even allow us to. Right. Like, it's full circle. This nigga's like Neo in the Matrix. I'm not saying you're going to hear the album bumping out of cars, but I'm saying don't shit on the nigga. The nigga put mad work in. And right. now he's going to do something different. Like Kenny G is an American treasure to the white people. Oh, yeah. Without question. Without question. You know what I'm saying? And that nigga can't rap. Yeah. <laughs> he just got one. He just got one lane, you know what I mean? <laughs> he's playing his clarinet, you know what I'm saying? Shout and, out to Kenny G with the one lane. I got you. <laughs> facts, you know, but I, I was I had this conversation with my dog the other day, and I'm liking into this, this movie Hero, right? It's just like Kung Fu flick. Saw Hero. Yeah, yeah, with all the colors and shit. Shit was. Dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. See if you remember. The nigga practiced his craft with the sword and got so he got so fucking good with the sword that eventually he didn't need it anymore. 
and he just like he transformed that to calligraphy. And right. the theme of the movie that a lot of niggas didn't get was the pen is mightier than the sword, and if you can you can win the fight without even having to touch the weapon. You know right. what I'm saying? I see that as this nigga Andre 3000 is evolving to a level that niggas is not even gonna get to for a while. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, what's up? Yeah, I was gonna say like, yeah. I mean, your perspective, what you just said, there, gay. I mean, definitely, you know, refreshing my thoughts about it. You know what I mean? It's like I, I knew, I knew definitely that, that you know it wasn't gonna be a hip hop album and all like that. But you know, I think people just you know. Uh, kind of had some fun with it, right? Because it was like almost, I think they felt that Andre was was trolling the audience. So then the audience said, oh, oh okay. Especially some of the, this, the core hip hop motherfuckers. It was like, oh, you're going to troll. You coming out with a new album. Oh, shit. But it's not what we thought it was. Like, ah, right, yeah. You troll us, we're going to troll you. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, uh, any true hip hop uh uh follower fan you know that's part of the the real culture will know exactly what you were saying is correct you know what i mean i mean like i said uh at the end of the day you know uh growth is important you know as much as we but he's he he has to look at some of the 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 fun that's being had at his expense at him being the guard mc you know what i mean him being that higher level that people want that say just one come this this a a verse, just something, an a EP, something, you know what I mean? So to see that people are that passionate that they would, you know, now any harsh thing or whatever like that, I'm, I'm definitely not going to say that the, the you know, the, the album is trash. I didn't hear it yet. I heard like snippets and stuff and I'm seeing where he's going with it. You know what I mean? So I'm like, oh yeah, that's that, that's what's up. It's not for uh, uh, the, 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 the hardcore underground camp that's popping right now it's not for y'all you know what i mean it's not it's something that it could be for y'all if you just want to chill out i think lean back pop one smoke one do whatever you want to do and uh throw the earphones on i think it'll be perfect for that perfect for meditation mm -hmm. perfect for bringing your vibrations to an even level if you too fucking hype you know what i mean and that's a tool you know what i mean you, you gotta keep in mind too man great art is supposed to provoke thought and conversation Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when Michelangelo came out with the David, it was talk about how lewd it was and blah blah blah. The shit is still a masterpiece to this day. You right. Know what I'm saying? This is what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to provoke these conversations. Right. But the one thing, even with, with people, you know, laughing and, and I don't think like it's nothing that's too too hurtful, you know, to to, to three thousand. But the people the the memes and the videos that's coming out that's you know funny and shit about them i don't think that is 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 something it's actually peaking people interest to go listen to the album mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean he got free promotion because niggas think right. it's funny that's what i'm saying so i mean you know either way it works out with him so salute to uh to dre 3000 you always groundbreaking doing what you're doing you're always part of hip-hop culture you're just a staple you said you feel that you're too old to rap i disagree with you right there brother I understand different things you don't know what to talk about but you know what to talk about you are artist so your experience whatever's going on in your head you talk about and in the andre 3000 way it will would convey to us is is some dope shit. so think about that we was talking about that earlier when you're saying um about you know putting the music out there for the people you know what mm -hmm. i mean and saying how you know you know you want to go into that again yeah yeah so all these albums it, it, it's like and you know to equate it to the to the crack game go back to my first album free bass pharaoh it's because i use the same marketing plan these are testers you know what i'm saying these these the free bass pharaoh the living guard i got the coliseum coming out december 19 and the next seven albums after that are free that's that's for y'all you know what i'm saying because i'm gonna try to get familiar to me familiar with me and see um the quality and content that i'm bringing so that you have a reason to spend your dollar with me in the future you know mm -hmm. so this is on me right now later on it's gonna be on, on y'all you know what i'm saying and and i want you to see why i deserve your time and your dollar and your effort 
because you know you you allow my music into your life there's got to be a reason and i'm not i'm not scared my product is going to show you right well, so what you're doing is that you uh you got a dope strategy of of building your brand you know what i mean and yeah. and and that that's correct and uh you know you know other artists should take heed to that you know what i mean it's uh basically what you're doing is your calling card each of these albums is your calling card your business card you know just to know for future business you know what i mean right. it's gonna be uh it's gonna be nuts so definitely yeah. that that and i'm not I'm, I'm not just building a brand i want to build trust because you gotta i want the people to know i'm not gonna flake on you it's not gonna be a couple dope jokes and then a bunch of bullshit. i'm going hard every time every right time. right right um in the future is because i know um, certain situations you may be in but in the future you look forward to to, to doing live performances and going and, and doing your thing on that oh absolutely man i'm i'm i'm, I'm sad right now because i can't be out there on the midwest tour with, with boo boo the prince he's out there kicking ass right now definitely and um i would love to be out there but pretty soon i'll be out and about um I look forward to, to hitting them with every facet. Live performances are just as important as recording, as as cover art. I take every aspect of this game seriously. Send uh, send good energy and blessings towards Reno RX way. You know what I mean? Um, we all could use it. You know what I mean? And and making sure that whatever uh, obstacles he may face, that he can overcome them, overcome them, and inspire others. You know what I mean? To do uh, to do better. So definitely, um, my prayers is with you on that, brother. You know what I mean? Thank you. Definitely. Um, this was dope. I know it was crazy. We we had to stop and go like a million fucking times, and people won't. I mean, if they just saw the raw footage of this shit, they'd be like, "Yo, this shit is crazy." You know what I mean? But I'm thank you know thankful that we could uh you know persevere and get to this moment. You know what I mean? I thank you. I thank Jay Rios for uh, definitely um hooking us up and suggesting. You know what I mean? And and now. Like I said, um, you know, I'm a new, you no, know, I'm a new fan, bro. And anything else you want, you, you want to go? I'm, I'm, I'm summing it up, but I want to ask you: Is there anything else you got? Uh, you want, you want that people know? Um, yeah, man. Um, I, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to be here and, and do this. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's first and foremost. Um, I want you guys to hear what I have to say. I want you to get. I want you to discuss it. Um. I'm, I'm thankful that outlets like yours allow me on their platform to 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 do this, to spread my tendrils, so to speak. Um, shit is dope. It's a blessing. And um, thank everybody who ever listened, who's going to listen. Um, I appreciate y'all more than y'all appreciate me. That's a fact. That's what's up, man. That's real. So definitely we'll, um, we'll end it with that. This was super, super dope. Uh, the first episode of the new season of the Pinoy Podcast, a.k.a. The Toe Show. Y'all going to be seeing more. And um, definitely bless. Once again, go get The Living God by Reno RX. The Living God by Reno RX. Out now on Spotify, all streaming platforms. Go to YouTube, check it out. He has a dope catalog that's that's building quickly. <laughs> like I said, you, you heard him. He, he knocks out albums like that. So definitely look out. Look, look out for some of uh, the future projects, including the Coliseum, which is the next album. So once again, you know, definitely thank you, brother. You know, all blessings to you and your family. And, um, yo, we're going to do this again for sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I look forward S to it, bro. Definitely. Salute, brother. Salute. Right. Definitely. We're going to leave that bitch wide open, slow motion. Uh -huh. Slow motion. Don't make me raise up, nigga. I live a fast life, but right now I'm just coast. Mm -hmm. Slow motion. Listen, my boy, it's all real. Yes. Fuck around and get your body back, vacuum sealed. Yes. I blow the mag from the rose, get y'all killed. Underneath this Versace, there's